So this is our last session. And uh, as in the previous sessions, we have two modules per session. Marami po tayong subtopics for uh, this morning. We will be talking about safe sport, diversity in sports. And lastly, we will be, uh, after our break, we will have a discussion about events, spaces, and property. So, um, so uh, again, good morning. Ito po ang ating first module for, for today. And by the way, uh, towards the end, before we adjourn this uh, session, I will be informing everyone about the requirement for passing the test in order for everybody uh, to get their certificate of completion from POC and PSI, as mentioned by Joe Wash. And from my end, my own certificate that I will give to everybody, of course, uh, subject to compliance with the requirements, uh, a, certif a sports law for all certificate. So for uh, this first module, we will be talking about safe sport. What is safe sport? Diversity and inclusivity in sports. So this will be the topics for uh, this first module. And again, uh, napaka, napaka palad po natin. Uh, and thank you to Hidelin for bringing the first gold to the, for the Philippines. And uh, kaya ako siya nilagay yung picture niya dito because of one of our topics for this first for this first module for this morning our seventh will be about women in sports we will also be talking about lgbtqia no? uh, so sa mga hindi nakakaalam ko ano itong acronym na to so lesbian gay bisexual transsexual queer intersexual and asexual and there could be a lot more and youth in sports and lastly, one of the takeaways, by the way, we have two takeaways for this first module. This morning, I have a proposed women in sports charter, and I also have a proposed safe sport charter, which you can download in my website. And these charters have been made available to everybody in our uh, portal. So let me begin, as always. Uh, Nag-uumpisa tayo bawat module ng isang quizzer or self-test. And uh, so again, for those of you who agree or who believe this, the statements are true or in the affirmative, then click on the check icon. And if it's false or if you do not agree or if it's incorrect, then kindly check the, the X icon. So let's begin with number one. Safe sport as a concept is founded on the 1987 constitution. Uh, so true or false? Yes or no? I suppose before you can answer this, you must be, you, you must know what safe sport is. Uh, in, in some, in short, safe sport talks about any freedom from harassment or freedom from discrimination because we respect the human rights of everybody, human rights for all, sports for all. So based on that understanding of space safe sport, safe sport is founded on the 1987 constitution. So the answer here is a check. Next statement, an athlete can be imprisoned for making Sexist remarks. No? Pwede bang makulong ang isang atleta for making sexist, misogynist uh, remarks? The answer is, it's a check. Uh, why? We have this uh, Bawal Bastos uh, law uh, which penalizes any sexist remark, slur, action uh, against anyone. No? Uh, once upon a time, only persons in authority are, are the offenders or can be penalized. Now it can be anybody, athletes, coaches, officials included. So the answer is you can be imprisoned or a fine can be imposed for making sexist remarks. Is it possible that the value of the prize of a male athlete will be higher 
than what a female athlete gets. Pusible ba na mas malaki ang value ng premyo ng isang, let's say, event organizer for a male athlete compared to what a female athlete should get? So pusible ba siya? So the answer is, is it, a, is it yes or is it no? Is it possible or not possible? The answer is, while the general rule is the prize must be the same, there are certain conditions wherein the prize may not be the same. And we will talk about that shortly. So regarding the statement, is it possible? The answer is yes. It is possible subject to certain conditions. Ito po, no? This pertains to a decided case in the United States. No? And more often than not, we borrow or we use as reference uh, American jurisprudence. So mamaya, I'll tell you the answer to this. No, I mean, sorry, ngayon na pala. No? So touching and massaging an athlete by a coach can be considered appropriate touching or is it legal or illegal? No? So what's your answer? The answer is, according to this case, and I will show you the citation shortly, the answer here is yes. It can be considered appropriate touching according to that U.S. case. But depending on the circumstances, it may not be considered appropriate touching. So I will, again, this is a U.S. case. Uh, wala pa tayong Supreme Court case here in the Philippines which pertains to this, especially under our new laws pertaining to the protection of women and those laws promoting safe sport. But again, here, according to this case, it can be considered appropriate. Number five, is this a fair statement? She swam like a man to win that race. Okay. So if you've been following mga IOC pronouncements in relation to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, this is one of those examples given by the IOC wherein such a statement is sexist in nature and therefore it is an unfair statement. So the answer to this is she, the statement, she, she swam like a man to win that race, is an unfair statement. So the answer here is uh, check, uh, sorry, cross, because it is unfair. Number six, a national federation can adopt its safe sport charter. Uh, can an NF or an NSA do that? The answer is check, an NSA. In fact, uh, it is my position that all NSAs, all uh, organizations in sports must have their own safe sport charter. And I'll share with you my sample charter in a bit. Number seven, a city can pass an ordinance which penalizes harassment and discrimination committed during the annual Palarong Panlunsod. Okay. If you recall, uh, in, uh, in module number uh, five last week, we said a, a local government can enact its own sports for a purpose ordinance. And in my sample ordinance, uh, any form of harassment and discrimination can be considered a local offense and therefore a penalty can be imposed. So the answer to number seven is Yes, or check. Number eight, a coach can disqualify an athlete for not allowing herself to be physically examined. Okay. Uh, this is again a US decided case. Okay. Uh, so, namaya, no? Hindi ko muna sasagutin ito. Uh, we will discuss the answer to this shortly. So uh, what happened here was uh, allegedly there was a government circular 
which authorizes coaches to conduct physical examination of private parts of uh, athletes. And uh, in this case, uh, nagkaroon ng ruling ang ating korte, which was not reversed by our Philippine Supreme Court. Let me correct myself. This is a Philippine Supreme Court case. So mamaya, no, abangan natin. Uh, suspend muna natin ang my answer to this, whether it's a check or an X. Number nine, there is a law which requires schools to have the same number of male and female scholars. Here, we're not talking about student athletes. Here, we're talking about number of scholars. Uh, if you recall, uh, in uh, I think module four, we said that there was no such law which requires the same number of student athletes who are male and the same number of student athletes who are female. Here, here's another law which we will discuss shortly. Kailangan ba pareho ang male and nabilang ng male and female athletes? Scholars rather, sorry. The answer is uh, no. There is no such law which requires the same number of male and female scholars. And I will show you the text of that law shortly. And lastly, sports events and facilities should be safe spaces. Uh, meron na tayong bawal bastos law here in the Philippines, which penalizes sexual harassment in public places and in the cyberspace. So here, uh, according to that law, uh, so sports events and facilities should be safe spaces. So the answer to this is check. So please, uh, these are the answers uh, and this could be important takeaways for everybody in terms of uh, summarizing what we, what we will learn in module seven. So let's talk about general principles. Uh, this is a review of our uh, module one. I just highlighted the, the provisions in our constitution, which promotes diversity, equal rights, and inclusivity. So dynamic social order, social justice, dignity of every human person, fundamental equality before the law of women and men, uh, promotion of youth. So the second, uh, second row talks about the, the, the state's responsibility towards promoting youth development and youth welfare. Earlier, I mentioned that safe sport, including safe sport, is founded in the Constitution. Also, in the UN Declaration of Human Rights, again, we discussed this in Module 1, uh, the four uh, rights, human rights, uh, specifically pertain to equality, diversity, and inclusivity. Free and equal in dignity and rights. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms regard without distinction of any kind, including sex. Right to life and all are equal before the law. So these are four uh, human rights which are relevant for our for this module seven. Of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations, there are three uh, SDGs which are relevant for this module. Good health and well-being of everybody, gender equality, and reduction of inequalities. So these are the three SDGs which are relevant when we talk about diversity and inclusivity. Also, uh, when we discuss uh, the, the, um, in module one, when we talk about the big picture, we talked about the rights of athletes and uh, the, lights, the rights that, we have, uh, that I have underscored in this uh, slide talks about practice sport and compete without being subject to discrimination based on sex or sexual orientation, having a fair and sporting environment, fair and equal gender representation, protection of mental and physical health, and protection from abuse and harassment, e athlete representation from also the female sector, report on ethical behavior, freedom of expression, which is important for everybody 
And lastly, if there is any accusation of any wrongdoing, say pertaining to harassment and discrimination, everybody is entitled to due process. So these are the rights uh, which have been spelled out by the Unite by the International Olympic Committee, which is again relevant for this morning's uh, topic. Let's now talk about women in sports. Let me begin with three cases. Uh, one from the Philippines, which is 1994. The reason why I highlighted this case is if this case, I'd like to think that if this case happened today, the decision of our Supreme Court will be different. What happened in this case? And again, this is a case against a judge because that judge dismissed a case for acts of lasciviousness allegedly committed by a volleyball coach wherein that coach summoned athletes for, for the coach to inspect the private parts for the presence of pubic hair according to a government circular. Okay, And in this case, According to the judge, because the girls consented, and uh, so the, the, that case was dismissed. <clears throat> so according to this case, failure to submit to physical examination, in this case, the effect was automatic disqualification of that, of that athlete in the volleyball team. The Supreme Court refused to render the judge administratively liable and basically upheld the decision of that judge. I'd like to think because of our current laws, recent laws, if this case happens today, the decision to my mind should be different. Let's now refer to two cases in the US 1999 case. Here, which is uh, one of the statements I asked, uh, I uh, mentioned earlier, here, touching and massaging are within the realm of appropriate touching. Uh, this may be a, uh, a debatable issue. Some would argue that there should, that coaches should not touch, Coach, coaches should not massage their athletes. Some would argue that this is dependent on one's law and dependent on the culture and the policies, let's say, of that organization. So this is actually, uh, some people would debate this, that not all forms of touching as held in this case, not all forms of touching can be considered inappropriate. In certain cases, touching may be defensible and may not be considered as a form of sexual harassment. So again, that's a 1999 case in the United States. In another case, here, because the coach controls the scholarship of the of the of athletes, and being the coach, in this particular case, and if a, uh, a case was brought for sexual harassment under the theory of the hostile environment, so it can be a hostile environment when uh, when a coach uh, controls the scholarship and imposes on athletes. So here are some examples of cases uh, which have been decided here and abroad pertaining to sexual harassment. Very important piece of legislation which is in, uh, an act passed into law in 2008. This talks about the Magna Carta of Women. And in section 14, of that law talks about women in sports, participation for excellence, equal access, no discrimination regard and equality regardless of sex, gender identity and other similar factors, all sports related organizations. So this can be NSAs, this can be uh, uh, organizations with the Philippine Paralympic Committee, local government units, uh, athletic associations, these are all sports related organizations and they are directed to create guidelines for affirmative action. And it is under this law, the state will also provide incentives to those who are promoting, 
uh, women's participation and girls' participation, not just in competitive, but also in non-competitive sports. So these are three very clear mandates under this Magna, Court, Magna Carta of Women. And there are more uh, mandates. Number one, and this pertains to our earlier question, can there be a different value or prize for women and male athletes, let's say for an organized event? The answer is, it depends. As a general rule, it must be the same. Okay? He, for provided that it will be for the same sports category. And therefore, if it's a different category, then the price need not be the same. The other requirement is uh, it must be open to both sexes and the tournament is divided into male and female divisions. So as a general rule, it must be the same, but in certain instances, it could be different. The other mandate under this law is safety and well-being of all women and girls. And, and here, another statement regarding scholars. Here, there's no mention of equality in terms of number of scholars for male and female. Here, the basis of the number of scholars for female is based on the total women student population. So the pro rata representation refers to the percentage of women in the whole student population, not in relation to the number of male scholars. So the answer to that statement is uh, um, uh, the reference is not regarding male and female, the number of male and female scholars, but the number of female scholars in relation to the total female women uh, student population. So here's uh, my, my, my ad, one of my advocacies is for all sports related organizations to adopt their own women in sports uh, charter. And again, you can download this in my website and this is available for everybody. So here's uh, this, this slide tells us the basis or the premises for women in sports. Declaration of Human Rights, which you have earlier mentioned, of course, our 87 Constitution, the International Charter of Physical Education, a very important uh, platform or declaration, uh, the one in uh, mention, uh, the, the Beijing Declaration, access, equal access, equal opportunities, equal programs, uh, equal participation. SDGs, we earlier mentioned there, that there are three of the 17 SDGs which promotes uh, equality. The Olympic Charter, the Charter of the International Paralympic Committee, UN Declaration, the, very, the Charter of the, the Bylaws of the Philippine Olympic Committee uh, also promotes women in sports. And we have an active Women in Sports Commission uh, in the POC. And lastly, uh, another basis, would be the Safe Spaces Act, which I will discuss shortly. And again, included here should be the Magna Carta of Women. So in this uh, proposed charter, there are seven key initiatives and programs, uh, strategic promotion of sports for women and girls, investment and infrastructure for women in sports programs, leadership representation, uh, I'm advocating uh, of course, in my, uh, in, in my proposed charter, that there should be a clear, a specific percentage of women, let's say, in the board of trustees of a sports organization, let's say, in the number of athletes, there should be a clear statement by the organization regarding leadership and representation. Zero tolerance against gender-based harassment and violence, training, support, and bias-free representation in media. And by the way, I will share with you shortly the, the current policy of the International Olympic Committee, which is, which is being implement, implemented now in the Tokyo Olympics relative to bias-free representation in media. And this is 
Uh, I captured this, the screenshots, is from the policy issued by the IOC. Uh, if you look at to your uh, left corner, uh, this was one of my example earlier, uh, that sh she swam like a man or a beast to win that, to win that race, uh, according, which is true. This is unfair, uh, an unfair uh, and insensitive uh, statement. So here are some examples of other unfair statements. She's the next, Michael Phelps, referring to a male athlete, or it's going to be a cut fight. So here are some of the examples given by the IOC. And at the bottom middle portion of this infographic, it tells us the do's and don'ts, the, the yes and no's, yeses and no's of, uh, of use of imagery. Uh, avoid passive sexy imagery. Do not focus unnecessarily on looks. Do not focus too much or only on the same athlete, ensure there are not significantly more images of one gender or community, and avoid, avoid reinforcing feminine and masculine stereotypes. So again, this uh, very fresh uh, new policy from the International Olympic Committee. LGBTQIA in sports. So here are some tips which uh, you, you can download, which I was able to download from the sport and development uh, website. Here are some tips for promoting the inclusion of LGBTQIA in sports. Use of proper, use of the appropriate names and pronouns. The, again, the use of the names, the use of pronouns will be based on what the athlete has chosen. Use gender neutral language. Hello, everyone, rather than hello, boys and girls. Avoid activities which classify athletes into boys and girls. Visibility of LGBTQ athletes and coaches. Have clear cut policies, private enclosed changing areas, team uniform or dress code. Uh, they should compete that will match the, in particular categories that will match their gender identity, which they have chosen. And when traveling, uh, they, the sharing of hotel room should be based on their gender identity. So here are clear cut tips uh, regarding how to promote greater inclusivity for LGBTQIA in sports. Let's now talk about youth in sports. Here are some, um, the international standards for children in sport uh, came out with these standards. The principles are outlined to your right. And there are four uh, objectives of the standards. Safe sporting environment. Again, for everybody, the environment must be safe to have a benchmark, standards, good practices, and clarity on safeguarding children. These are the, uh, the, res the, the purposes of having safe sport for children. And recently, uh, our international leaders came up, sorry, with six game-changing actions to end violence against children. Ban all forms of violence, Equip parents and caregivers to keep children safe. Make the internet safe for children. Make school, schools safe. Protect children from violence and more investment. And the, inv the funds should be better spent. Just a review of the administrative agencies here. Uh, let's focus on the mandate of these agencies pertaining to youth. For the Philippine Sports Commission, encourage and sustain <clears throat> development of sports nationwide for the DepEd to undertake the annual Palarong Pambansa. Uh, for local government units, they are uh, the mayors, the governors, and the punong barangays are duty-bound to hold annual uh, sports events. Bawal bastos sa sports. Ano ba ang mga pinagbabawal 
uh, sa sports related to any form of sexual harassment, discrimination, and uh, bullying. Actually, this is my first uh, primer. And again, you can download it as well in my website. In this, in the anti-gender-based harassment law, it talks about safe spaces wherein anyone, not just persons in authority, can be held liable for misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and slurs. So here, if you look at the right column, it talks about what are the safe spaces. They are public spaces, including sports facilities, including malls, including public utility vehicles. And the other safe space must be in the cyber, cyberspace, in online. And, and, and also in this law, it governs sexual harassment in the workplace and educational and training institutions. What is the basic value uh, being promoted in this, in this law? Gender respect for gender identity and or expression. The personal sense of identity this is a choice by everybody. So, okay. So this is uh, the Bawal Bastos Sports. What are the particular acts which are uh, can be penalized or which are the offenses outlined in this law? So here we must distinguish between public spaces, physical spaces, and online. So here to your left would be the examples of the public spaces. And uh, these are examples of the, of, the, of the offenses, cursing, wolf whistling, cat calling, and here's the enumeration of other um, illegal activities, which are verbal and non-verbal and physical offenses, stalking, offensive sexual harassment, exposing private parts, uh, all of these are enumerated under this Bawal Bastos Act. And again, for, uh, for online, these are the, the, um, the types of offenses committed online, which can be penalized of either fine or imprisonment under the Bawal Bastos Act. Again, bottom line, all spaces must be safe. Which is captured in this proposed safe sport charter. What is a safe sport environment? And let me allow me to read this. The safety of athletes against all forms of harassment, discrimination, abuse, violence, or bullying in sports, whether physical, emotional, psychological, or specifically gender-based, in person or online, based on race, ability, religion, poverty, status, position, education, ethnic background, opinion, and differences shall be guaranteed at all times. So safe sport for everyone, safe sport for all. And here are specific uh, responsibilities by officers of an organization, by coaches, staff, volunteers, and consultants of organizations, and by athletes themselves. Respect is the bottom line of safe sport. Respect for others, others to respect you as well. And let, let me also announce to everybody that, uh, that a lot of National sports associations not belonging to the Philippine Olympic Committee have signified formally in writing their safe sport pledge. And this is an example of that safe sports, safe sport pledge. And we encourage all sports organizations to adopt the same pledge or a similarly worded pledge, basically promoting and pledging towards safe sport here in the Philippines. 
So this ends my uh, first lecture for this morning. We talked about basically safe sport, women in sports, uh, LGBTQIA plus in sports, and youth in sports. And for our uh, last module, not necessarily our last meeting, because I'd like to think that we will meet again in the future and either in the same uh, with PS PSC and PSI, or again, um, if you have questions uh, after this module, uh, just message me or send me an email and uh, hopefully we'll, we can become uh, true partners and co-advocates in sports law for all. So our last module for our last session uh, for today will be about events, spaces, and property. So our topics for today will be, let's talk about in general, what are the rules, duties, and risks. Uh, and we will also, we will talk about intellectual property, doping, what are the sports related disputes, who can resolve these disputes, and the alternative uh, dispute mechanism is arbitration, which is one of the subtopics for this morning's uh, module. Again, uh, ang huli nating quizzer for our course. Number one, it is the legal duty of an athlete to follow the rules of the sport. Okay, check if it's yes or true, and X if it's false or uh, incorrect or no. Is it the legal duty of an athlete to follow the rules of the sport? The answer is yes. Next, an athlete assumes all the risks when participating in a competition. Yes or no? But before you answer, let me highlight that word all. Does an athlete assume all the risks or, but, or just some or not all of the risks? So here, what is your answer? Assume, athlete assumes all the risk? Yes or no? The answer is no. It's a cross. X, Y. As I will explain later on, an athlete does not assume all the risks. So what type of risks does an athlete assume? I will explain that shortly. Third statement, sanctions can be imposed when a contract is violated. Yes or no? By the way, mamaya, meron akong example dito. No? Uh, Sariwang sariwa no? and uh, regarding uh, basketball. So sanctions can be imposed when a contract is violated. The answer is check. But of course, the sanctions must be in the contract itself. So makailangan contracts even pertaining to sports must be complete and must be robust. Number four, an athlete Ito po, a series of questions pertaining to anti-doping. The athlete is ultimately responsible for what he or she swallows, injects, or applies to his or her body. Ultimately responsible. Meron din po tayo example dito mamaya. No? But the answer to number four is check. Or yes, it is the ultimate responsibility of the athlete. Kung ano ang kanyang kinakain, ano ang kanyang supplements, ano ang ini-inject sa kanyang katawan. So the answer is yes or check. Number five, there is no limit to the number of times an athlete can be tested each year, including in competition, out of competition, random, and target testing? Yes or no? Wala limit in terms of number. The answer here is 
yes, there is no limit. So the, the statement is true. Number six, if a nutritional supplement is bought from a pharmacy, meaning over the counter, it is always permitted in sport. So if you buy a supplement or an energy drink over the counter, does it necessarily mean that it is permissible and not prohibited? No. So here, the answer is cross. Because even over-the-counter supplements you buy, buy over-the-counter can be in the list of prohibited drugs. Let us connect number six with number four. So it is the responsibility of the athlete to determine, to check, to study, to ascertain whether a particular supplement drink is prohibited. And therefore, even if it is available over the counter, if it is prohibited, then there is no excuse. You can be penalized. Number seven, coaches, doctors, or any other support personnel assisting or encouraging an athlete to take prohibited substances can be sanctioned if that athlete tests positive. Yes or no? The answer is yes. So an, an official, a coach who, would, who assists or encourages an athlete can also be held liable. Number eight, an event logo can be used by another event without the consent of that event organizer upon pertaining to intellectual property. The answer is an event logo is proprietary and therefore without the consent of the owner, you, another entity cannot use that logo. Number nine. Only courts can resolve sports-related dis disputes. Only courts. The answer is no. As I will explain shortly, there are other adjudicators when we talk about sports. So not only courts can resolve sports-related disputes. And last number for this last quizzer will be is to submit to arbitration, concerned parties need not agree. Yes or no? The answer is no. One of the fundamental requirements for arbitration is there must be consent by all affected parties. And how do you indicate or manifest consent? I will share with you the manner, the form by which consent is given uh, as we continue with this lecture. Let's now talk about, in general, the big picture, the rules, the duties, and the risks. Rules of the game. Rules must be strictly followed so that there will be no anarchy and chaos. And athletes must respect the decisions of officials. So rules must be followed by everybody, no exception. That's the first rule regarding the rules of the game. Number two, the referees, and this is a case which we discussed before, the TBA has no, cannot change the decision of the, of the referees. The referees are the final authority on the playing court. But now because of the videotaping of certain, certain of the whole event and the replay of certain plays, uh, this might uh, change. Again, this is a case decided in the 20, 2011. Right now, this is uh, the controlling decision, but we don't know in the future, this could change. Next, and this is an American case, Each everybody must follow the recognized set of rules which govern 
the conduct of the competition. By the way, who has the final say? Who, has the, who is that authority which determines the rules of a particular game? It is actually the international federations. The international federations have the technical expertise and they're the, they're the ones who define the rules for a particular game. And everybody must know these rules. And one of the key feature of these rules would be rules on safety. Because we need to protect players from any form of injury. So here are the three rules regarding the rules of the game. What would be the duty of the athlete? It is the legal duty to, of an athlete. The legal duty is to every other player on the field to refrain from conduct from a conduct prohibited by a safety rule. Okay, and therefore a player is liable for injury for the conduct of an athlete, either deliberate, willful, or willful, or with a reckless disregard for the safety of the other player. And therefore, if it is not deliberate, if it is not willful, and if there's no reckless disregard for the safety of the other player, then that other athlete who caused the injury will not be held liable. For as long as that athlete followed the rules of the game and the conduct was not deliberate, willful, or reckless disregard. So all athletes must refrain from reckless misconduct. So again, in that third case here, uh, what is what an athlete can be penalized, again, for willful, intentional, or reckless disregard for the safety of the other player. So again, it is established that all athletes, they have the legal duty to follow the rules particularly those pertaining to safety. If you recall, one of the statements we flashed earlier, does an athlete assume all the risks? The answer is no. An athlete does not assume those risks which are not obvious and those which are not foreseeable. So an athlete only assumes those risks which are obvious and foreseeable. An athlete is not expected to assume unexpected or unsportsmanlike risks. Okay. Regarding events, what would be the obligations regarding events? Here, in this particular case, this was a, a fun run in Quezon City and the organizers failed to block off a particular road. It failed to coordinate properly the volunteers for that race. And there was an athlete, a kid, who was injured. So here, the event organizer was held to be liable. liable. It must conduct due diligence. That is a requirement. And... Uh, must the event because this particular risk is foreseeable no? so all not blocking off a particular road and coordinating the volunteers any any injury that will result from these two lapses are considered obvious are considered foreseeable and therefore the event organizers can be held liable for lack of due diligence. Here's a summary of certain assumptions. Athletes are assumed to be sports persons. They are assumed to promote safety. Qualified assumption of risk, again, only those which are obvious and foreseeable, and they must respect the decisions of referees. For coaches, they must promote the welfare and interests of the athletes, and they must have appropriate training. For event organizers, they must conduct due diligence and must mitigate all foreseeable and obvious risks. And lastly, for referees, they have the freedom 
However, they have the responsibility of also of being fair. So here's a summary of the assumptions which we have discussed previously. Let's now talk about intellectual property, the creations, the result of innovation of one of a person of one's mind. Here, according to the Global Innovation Policy Center for sports, there are four sectors by which people are encouraged to create and innovate. Those pertaining to teams and leagues, broadcasting, sporting goods, apparel, and sportswear. Here are the intellectual properties for sports sector and patents, trademarks, design rights, copyrights, and trade secrets. So when we talk about patents, we talk about the equipment, footwear, wearables, uh, apps, energy drinks, and supplements. When we talk about trademarks, we talked about personality rights and branding. Uh, earlier, we talked about the event logo, branding of teams, and branding of leagues. Uh, design rights, community design, and industrial design. And for copyrights, we have promotion, marketing, logos, game day literature, merchandise, software, online games, and broadcasting. And there's this case which says that sport events cannot be subject of a copyright. Okay? But what can be subject of copyrights are the what I have listed here. And lastly, trade secrets, which are proprietary, that include statistics, scouting reports, metrics, and techniques. And lastly, would be processes. So this in one infographic tells us what would be the intellectual property, which are sports related. And here in the Philippines, uh, the protector or the promoter, promoter of intellectual property would be the IPO, uh, the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. And if you look at it, it's at, at the, its mandate, it talks about being development oriented. It has the power to regulate. It has the power to enforce, adjudicate, and make policies. So if you want your, your logo or your trademark to be copyrighted, then you must register it with the Intellectual Property Office. So let me just give an example. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, recently uh, resolved with finality a case between Ellers Lechon and Ellers uh, Lechon. Here, the Supreme Court said that the proprietor of Ellers Lechon, uh, because applying the dominancy test, uh, violated the intellectual property of Ellers uh, Lechon. Uh, the Olympic, the name, the term Olympic, the Olympic rings are proprietary, are owned by the International Olympic Committee. And here in the Philippines, it is the Philippine Olympic Committee, which must help protect the Olympic logos, the Olympic name, the Olympic design. Here, uh, there's a pending case between the International Olympic Committee and the owner of the Olympic Village. This is still pending uh, because the IOC is asserting its ownership over the name Olympic. And that's a reason for the action brought about by IOC against the owner of the Olympic Village. This has not been decided yet. Let's now talk, talk about doping. We have in, in 2021, recently, the, the Anti-Doping Authority, the World Anti-Doping Authority, released the 2021 Anti-Doping Code, which must be followed, which is currently being followed in the Tokyo Games. It is being followed by all international federations, all international Olympic, national Olympic committees, national Paralympic committees, and national federations. Here in the Philippines, we have the FINADO. This is the, the National Anti-Doping Authority in the Philippines. And again, these slides I borrowed from the presentation of Dr. Pineda. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pineda. 
What is doping? Uh, let me just read it. Use of physiological substances in abnormal amount and of abnormal methods with the exclusive aim of attaining an, an artificial and unfair increase of performance in competition. Again, we play sports uh, because it is a fair uh, environment. So here are the 10 examples of what, uh, what constitutes uh, doping. Presence of a prohibited substance use, ref refusing to get a sample that is considered uh, uh, doping, failure to, uh, to determine the whereabouts of an athlete, tampering, possession, trafficking, administering uh, a prohibited substance, complicity. Earlier, we mentioned that even coaches who actively endorse, participate, encourage an athlete to take in an, a prohibited substance can be rendered liable and prohibited association with any personnel who are ineligible on account of this anti-doping. So this constitutes doping, which can be penalized. Why do we fight doping? There are four simple reasons. And this is, this, these are also the core uh, values of safe sport. Clean athletes, healthy and safe competition, spirit of sport and society. Here in the Philippines, we have the FINADO, which is an attached agency of the Philippine Sports Commission. So this is an example of a public-private partnership between the Philippine Sports Commission, which is government, and the Philippine Olympic Committee, which is a private entity. So for doping control tests for in-competition, which is random, and out-of-competition tests, this is in coordination with the FINADO here in the Philippines. We have the uh, regional FINADO, which, have, which is the Southeast Asian uh, RADO, which is uh, attached to the World Anti-Doping Agency. Here are some decisions regarding anti-doping, and these are decisions rendered by the Court of Arbitration for, of Sport. Uh, so the, the quantum of proof to prove that one committed a doping offense is what we call the comfortable satisfaction standard, not the, not the standard for which is a lower standard in criminal cases. What would be the evidence required to determine, to satisfy the, the comfortable standard satisfaction would be it could be the test, the results of the test, and alternative evidence. And what is an example of an alternative evidence? A, an uncontroverted testimony of a wholly credible witness. That can be an alternative evidence. And lastly, uh, depends on your behavior. So for good conduct, and if the supplement was described as free, of the prohibited substance, which is not the fault of an athlete. In this particular case, the penalty was still reduced. You can still, you are still liable because again, it is the, the who has the ultimate responsibility that will be the athlete. So here, because of this mitigating circumstances, good conduct and the advertisement of the, of the owner of that supplement the penalty was reduced from two year suspension to 15 month suspension. So here's a case, a highly publicized case, the case of, uh, of Kiefer uh, Ravenna. Here he bought dust uh, over the counter. Again, that was, he should have checked. Here uh, it was over the counter a walang prescription and you can buy it, but it is up to the player to assess whether it is banned or not. Ignorance is not an excuse. And this was the statement, the correct statement made by uh, Al Panlilio, who was the president of, uh, of uh, the SBP, the NSA for basketball here in the Philippines. There are 12 possible disputes related to sports breach of contract, not following the terms of the contract, injuries, harassment and discrimination of safe, 
safe sport, doping, unfair play and rules, membership of a member of a national sports association, crimes, of course, violation of human rights, uh, not giving the right benefits according to the contract, violation of a law, uh, Magna Carta for Women, or an ordinance, let's say a local government adopts the sports for a purpose ordinance, infringement of intellectual property, which we discussed earlier. And lastly, not being, uh, not being allowed to compete to compete in a particular event, so event representation. So these are the 12 possible disputes relating to sports. And who will resolve? Who will adjudicate these disputes? It can either be the courts, not just the courts. It can be an arbitrator or a panel of arbitrators. Um, for the National Olympic Committee and the National Paralympic Committee, for the Philippine Paralymp sorry, for the Philippine Olympic Committee, we have an arbitration committee, which I currently head. We have an ethics committee. And right now we have a safe sport technical working group. The International Federation can also resolve disputes. NSAs and national federations can also resolve disputes. In the case of my federation, the Filipinas Obstacle Sports Federation, we have a grievance procedure for grievances uh, related to sports. And government can also become, can also adjudicate certain controversies regarding sports. And when there is a breach of a sports related contract, what are the possible remedies? You are directed to perform that what you were failed to perform, that is specific performance, or substitute performance. Someone else could perform what you failed to perform if this is allowed and proper, or payment of a sum of money, such as damages. That is what we call equivalent performance. You can cancel the contract. You can lengthen the contract. You can ask the courts to stop a particular activity such as an injunction, injunctive relief, penalties can be imposed. And I'll give an example regarding this. A particular person can be blacklisted or not allowed to be a member or to participate. Withdrawal of benefits, if, if that is so provided in the contract. By the way, if you recall in my template uh, contract between an NSA and an athlete, Withdrawal of benefits is allowed depending on the grounds. And lastly, re removal as a member could be a possible remedy for a breach of contract. So uh, again, uh, pertaining to Kiefer, uh, he was allowed to play in the Japan League subject to certain conditions, uh, which is pointed out in the arrow. One, uh, the, his team, uh, will have to pay the league a certain sum of money because it violates the uniform player's contract, which was, uh, which was reviewed. And now we have a new uniform player's contract. And I was part of the study group that proposed certain changes to the UPC. And again, if, if Ravenna will fail to return to the Philippines after one year or after one season, then he will be penalized. So here is an example of a breach of contract and there are sanctions imposed on the team and sanctions could be imposed on the players for breach of the terms of the agreement. Liabilities can be criminal and again, only the courts can impose a a fine or imprisonment, civil, such as the payment of damages, and administrative for, for government officials for non-performance of their respective duties. Uh, again, one example will be failure to conduct an annual palaro that could be considered a dereliction of duty against a local official or a non-delivery of devolved functions for local officials. And by the way, there could also be graft uh, and corruption for when we talk about, let's say, public funds and projects undertaken by government pertaining to sports. 
So what are the choices uh, for resolving disputes? Uh, here is a comparison between filing a case in court or an alternative dispute mechanism, which is arbitration. Here's a comparison of, uh, of uh, mediation. And again, when in mediation, the mediator does not render a ruling, does not determine who is right or wrong. In mediation, the mediator simply assists both parties in terms of how to resolve their conflict or their, of the dispute. The mediator cannot decide on behalf of the, of, the, of the parties. So here, the parties uh, are autonomous and they determine and they have control over the mediation because whether the parties agree or they do not agree or come to terms, it is not up to the mediator. It is entirely up to the parties to agree or not to agree. For arbitration, the arbitrator, whether it's a sole arbitrator or a panel of arbitrators, the arbitrator decides the case. It resolves the controversies. It determines who is right or wrong. There could be a combination of mediation and arbitration. You start off with mediation, then later on, you allow the private parties to decide on behalf of the parties. And in litigation, the, the, the decision, the dispute is resolved by a judge who is a public official because in arbitration, these are uh, private individuals. So litigation like arbitration, for litigation, the courts or the judges would resolve the controversy. So when we talk about arbitration and litigation, due process is an essential requirement. Parties must be notified. There must be a, 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 a fair and impartial judge or an impartial arbitrator or tribunal. Here are certain choices. Uh, again, earlier I underscored for it to be proper for arbitration, all parties must agree. There must be consent on the part of the parties. How do, where do we see the agreement or the consent? Number one, there's a primary agreement wherein, which says that if there's any dispute in a particular case, there must be, uh, it will be subject to arbitration so that could be in a prior pre-signed agreement. The other one will be a subsequent agreement. We call this a submission agreement. There is no contract which provides for arbitration, but the parties can agree later on to subject it to arbitration. So that is what we call a submission agreement. Approach can be institutional like the Court of Arbitration for Sports, and we, earlier we cited some of its decision, or ad hoc, uh, no particular formal body or person, but that person is duly designated by the parties to resolve the disputes. The grounds can be broad or specific. An example would be in the charter of the Philippine Olympic Committee, there are three uh, actions or disputes which can be resolved by the POC through the arbitration committee, intra-NSA disputes, disputes pertaining to the Olympics, and disputes pertaining to doping. Here, under the bylaws of the Philippine Olympic Committee, a dispute between one NSA and another NSA cannot be subject of an arbitration under the bylaws, unless, of course, both NSAs would agree in a submission agreement to subject their disputes to the authority of the Philippine Olympic Committee. The arbitrator can be one person or a panel normally of three, and it can be local arbitration or international arbitration as in the case of the CAS. Below this, uh, this slide is the process for arbitration. A request is made for arbitration, then the arbitrator or panel is constituted, then the, the party or the respondent is asked to file his or her or its reply. 
Then there is a hearing, memorandums are submitted, decision is rendered, an appeal could be made in, in the case of institutional arbitration, an appeal could be made before the CAS and a decision is enforced. So this is the flow. Basically, this captures the, the due process when we talk about uh, adjudication of disputes. So this ends my lecture, but before I turn you over to our, uh, to our MC, uh, Joe Wash, let me just underscore the fact that in order for you to be entitled to a certificate of completion from POC and PSI, in order for you to be entitled to get a certificate from yours truly, a sports law for all certificate, what are the requirements? Number one requirement, you must have attended all the four sessions, all the eight modules. If you fail to attend one session or two modules, then you will be entitled to a certificate of attendance of the modules that you were able to attend, but you will not get a certificate of completion. The second requirement must you have you must take and pass the test. One take only. When is the test? Next Tuesday, August 3, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Everybody will take the test at the same time. It is synchronous. It will be through Google Forms. And the Google Form link will be, uh, will be, can be found in the Zoom chat that will be activated at 10 a.m. of August 3. So please wait for additional information and guidance and guidelines from POC and PSI. Uh, one question that you will ask would be, what is the type of the test? Is it hard or is it difficult or easy? Is it essay and or objective? You will know the answer to these two questions on August 3, when you open the portal, the Google Forms for our test. So please, uh, all the materials, all the PowerPoint presentations, all the reference materials are, have been uploaded uh, in our portal for this course. Uh, and I'll now call ang ating po moderator, Ms. Arian Maliare, uh, to proceed uh, and uh, to proceed para sa atin pong open forum. Hello, Ms. Arian. Hi, Sir Joash and Attorney Al. Good morning po sa inyo at syempre dun sa mga participants natin. Again, uh, it was a very interesting and concise modules on uh, ito nga po diniscuss po ni Attorney Al. Uh, modules on inclusivity in sports and events, spaces, and property. So now, I will open the floor for questions from our participants. Pero this time, simulan po natin to Attorney kasi... Uh, kanina pa siya nag-share po itong si Dean Kiko Diaz from UPCHK. Hello, Attorney Al. Dean Kiko here from UP. Not a question but sharing specifically doon po sa discussion na different in prize money among genders. Kahit po sa US problem nila ito, ang problem kasi ay it is the private sponsors of the big tournaments who dictates the prize money. But definitely, Female professional athletes have long tried to correct this. Sila Billie Jean King sa pro women's tennis ang unang nag-raise ng issue na ito publicly. And if I'm not mistaken, sadly up to now, there is still a big disparity. Again, uh, gusto ko rin magpasalamat kay Dean Kiko ano? uh, for being around for all the sessions. So agree. Uh, you know, lahat tayo dapat, I, I think isang output sana ng sports law for all course is lahat tayo talagang uh, we isasabuhay natin yung sports law for all uh, you know and uh, i think i've underscored all the rights all the policies all the values and the challenge now is really how to live these values no? so thank you din kiko 
Yes. And this time, ito naman yung question, Attorney Al, ni Din Kiko. So, what is your view on use of other ergogenic aids? It is not limited to doping and ingestion of banned substance to improve performance. It can be mechanical as well. Example, the use of Nike Vaporfly is now being questioned because of its effect of breaking the record times of users of these shoes in marathon races. Well, that's a quote-unquote raging debate. No? Uh, kasi ang bottom line ng sports is uh, hindi lahat ng enhancement ay mali. No? Hindi lahat ng enhancement ay prohibited. No? And again, we must determine the fine line between what is fair and what is unfair. No? So dun, I think yung tanong ni Dean Kiko will focus on that. No? Uh, so how I wish there could be a, a clear-cut answer to that question. Uh, kasi e equipment can go either way. If, uh, ang tanong kasi if it's available to everybody, pero ilan lang ang nag-avail of what is available to all, then does that, that is that a reason to excuse it and therefore make it legal? So, you know, um, that could be another forum. Ano? Uh, and maybe we, it's it's good to hear from other resource persons as well. Uh, I, I, you know what? Uh, as I was preparing for this four Tuesdays, and dami pwedeng maging further discussion. Uh, I was thinking up pwede tayong magkaroon ng uh, PSI debates. No? Uh, yes. uh, pwede, uh, you know, magandang debate not just for lawyers, but debates on policies. And I think that could be productive for for policy reform in the future. So that that can be one topic of a debate. Yes. This one, Attorney Al from UA, Ms. May Flores. Good morning, Attorney. Would there be a legal accountability in posting a video in social media of teams or players in action of sports competition or activities like Palarong Pambansa without the poser make, uh, asking permission from the people in the video? Uh, okay. Normally, I've seen a lot of TV shows that they get the consent of the athletes. No, before otherwise, without the consent, they blur, they blur the 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 faces of the athletes. Um, second, one way of avoiding that and ensuring that there's no violation of the personal the rights of the, of the people. Normally, in a waiver form. Kasi kami sa federation, yung aming waiver form, not just for assumption of risks, but also for use of photos in videos for purposes of publicity. Uh, kaya maganda kasama yon in the waivers, in the consent form of the athletes para in the future walang problema regarding use of their, of their faces. So uh, that's one way of of eliminating that problem. Yes. This one attorney from Kidapawan City, Augustus Guhiling. What is your stand on LGBTQIA participa participating in full contact sports? Uh, again, I'm a firm, I'm an advocate of sports for all, youth, women, LGBTIAQ, you know, and dami ng acronyms. But again, here, freedom is important and choice is important. So uh, there are IFs, and again, mahalaga dito ang role ng IFs regarding there are certain measurements, there are certain metrics, whether they can be allowed for a particular category. So this could be dependent on the on the IF, what can be allowed or not allowed. So it can the answer there is dependent on the IF and the sport. So uh, I'm not too familiar with the regulations of contact sports. And we have a lot of contact sports kung ano ang kanilang metrics by which they can fall under, quote-unquote, the male category and the female uh, category. Yung iba, they determine the yung count ng hormones. So uh, iba't iba bawat IF. And hopefully there will be a universal guidelines that everybody could follow. Yes. There's one attorney from Philippine uh, Para Archery, Elizabeth Baila. 
Is it legal to have two NSAs? For instance, Phil Spada and WAP. Uh, again, uh, tech, dapat isa lang, ang NS, isa lang ang NSA per sport. Uh, why? Because this is the rule of the International Olympic Committee and the International Paralympic Committee. One NSA, one NOC, one NPC, one uh, only one. So at some point, the, the IF resolves the dispute. Uh, Ultimately, whether there are two NOCs, there are two NSAs. So, uh, isa lang po ang kinikilala bawat sport at bawat bansa. This one, Attorney Al from Erie Surodien Ferranco. What if there will be a novel sports or a new tournament systems that will be invented? Are they subject to intellectual property? Uh, according to that case which I cited earlier, yung sports events not subject to intellectual property. Pero there are certain aspects of that event like statistics, like the logo, na, na pwedeng ipa-register uh, as an intellectual property. Pero yung rules of the game, uh, how to run uh, that particular event, according to that case, uh, US case, uh, not subject to intellectual property. Sports events, uh, again, in the Philippines, wala pang ganung case. What I cited was a U.S. case. Yes. This one, Attorney Al from Coach Jojo Posadas of Patapa. Ang tanong ko po, bakit po nag-take ng banned substance ang player without the knowledge ng association? Bakit liable ang buong association? Yan ata ang rules ngayon. Unfair sa association at sa ibang players. Pag nag-positive at nahuli ang player, bakit liable o damay ang buong association at ibang players? Uh, my sense is, I'm not too familiar with that incident, pero my sense is, ano muna yung degree of participation of the association? Uh, kasi kung hindi naman niya in-encourage, tapos nagko-conduct siya ng training, let's say, on the anti-doping code, no? and closely the coaches monitor itong... Uh, what is being taken by the, the athletes. So again, it depends on the degree of participation, if any, of the NSA, of a coach, of an official to determine the extent of culpability or liability of that individual. So uh, I'm also not sure who imposed that penalty uh, on that NSA. Uh, so... Um, Again, yun, uh, earlier we described that isang, an, an, isang doping offense would be yung complicity of the NSA, of the coach, of the official. Yes. And this one last question, Attorney Al, from LSCA Jeremy Dityoko. With regards to Bernard the case, was he penalized with a lifetime ban in the PBA because of the court dispute? Again, in the, in the referee case, uh, ginalang ng Supreme Court yung freedom of the athlete. Ah, sorry, freedom of the coach in, in, calling the, in, in calling the shots, so to speak. And in that particular case, the PBA, uh, walang authority to, to, uh, to change the decision of the athlete. And again, also in sports law, can you... Uh, go to court and question the decision of a referee. Uh, the the general rule is you cannot. Uh, hindi siya tinatawag na justiciable controversy. But er earlier I made a certain a qualification. What if it was established that halimbawa binayaran yung coach, halimbawa there's a uh, yung uh, yung referee uh, may graft issue regarding the coach. What if talagang uh, it can be proven na Coach was biased, the referee was biased. I think pwede mag iba yung decision ng korte regarding that. Yes. So, again, bottom line fairness, uh, sports personship. Again, hindi na po sportsman, uh, sport personship. I think that's one of the clear takeaways of this sports law for all. Yes. Ito, Attorney Al, merong pahabol na question. Si Sir Ricardo Bunghanoy IV. In tertiary sports, if there 
if ever there will be disputes between collegiate AAs, is there any arbitral council or office or agency to solve disputes and controversies? Example, athlete piracy. Again, uh, if you recall our discussion last time, uh, option one, you file it with the AA itself, the Athletic Association. But if you feel that the AA will not act on your complaint, then as we explained last time, pwede kang pumunta sa DepEd or in the cases of tertiary schools, you can elevate it directly with the CHED, uh, the Commission on the Higher Education. So yun yung binanggit ko kaninang government uh, as, a, as an adjudicator. Uh, government in that case, DepEd or CHED could resolve these controversies. Aside from the AAs themselves, uh, kung may issues regarding residency, piracy, regarding uh, student athletes. Yes. Okay, thank you, Attorney Al. And uh, back to you, Joash. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ano, thank you very much, Ms. Arian and uh, Attorney Al for uh, the comprehensive uh, open forum. I hope na tanong na ng mga participants sa atin lahat. Ano, uh, I'm very sure may mga matters talaga that uh, are yet to be answered, Attorney. No? Siyempre, uh, beyond... Joash, one more thing, Joash. Sige po, sorry, attorney, go ahead. sorry to interrupt. Again, huling paalala, no? uh, aral kayo ng mabuti. Uh, <laughs> yung mga PowerPoint presentations uh, are available. Itong last two, I will send it to the, to the PCO shortly para it can be uploaded para umpisa na tayo mag-aral. Mm. Again, right now, the policy is take one. Pag hindi kayo pumasa... By the way, we will determine kung anong passing mark. Uh, is it is it 90%? Is it 50-50? Siguro we will disclose that uh, when you log in to the, to the portal for the test. So again, one take. Sorry, uh, Joash, uh, Arian. One take. Uh, and synchronous, sabay-sabay kayong lahat, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. The link will be in the, in the Zoom chat that mm -hmm. will be opened uh, I don't know if, if it can be opened by 9.30. Uh, maybe the, the PSI and the POC can inform everyone. Pero ang test will start at 10. Mm -hmm. uh, may essay ba? We, you will know on Tuesday. Uh, meron bang uh, multiple choice? You will know on Tuesday. Right minus wrong ba? You will know on Tuesday. Uh, Papa okay. Sabat si Joash, we will know on Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Naiisip ko lang dito, attorney, na exam eh. Yung, akala ko po yung ginuguhi talang yung arrow, minamatch, oh, match may, lang po. May connect yung, the dots ba? May connect the dots. Yun lang po. We will know on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> so again, um, aral lang po. No? Again, sports law for all. And uh, wala po ako itatanong na hindi ko na, na lecture or hindi kasama sa materials. Okay, so yun lang po. Uh, sorry, Joash, to interrupt and Arian. Mag mahalaga po yan. At least uh, informed po lahat. Ano? And uh, syempre, yung link po to the exam will be released when prompted. So please stay tuned po. No? Probably sa inyo po itong mga emails, I believe, will be sent out ang uh, uh, directions for our examination and syempre the Zoom link. Uh, we're still getting a few reminders from our working group. Uh, but you can always send po no? ang inyo pong mga inquiries uh, dito po sa kanila sa ating chat box and uh, siguro uh, attorney a lot a lot na lang po no your time no kasi syempre baka most of our participants some and are, are may mga prior commitments na on Tuesday but please uh, if you find that time po no uh, uh, please uh, make time din po uh, for the exam this coming Tuesday that being said uh, we will now be no, what's attorney your last one Sorry, meron lang question here. I looked at yeah. the chat box. Makakatake ba po ng exam kung tatlong sessions lang? Uh, the answer is no. You can only mm. take the exam if you attended all the four sessions. If you miss the session, uh, uh, PSC and PSI will have to determine kung merong makeup session, kung meron tayong part two, kung meron tayong uh, uh, self-paced course. But right now, you cannot take the test. Mm -hmm. uh, if you fail to attend all, even one session, kasi kailangan po all sessions. Na. Salamat. All right. 
Okay. I hope that's clear mo sa lahat po. And uh, we will now take this time before we uh, conclude our uh, session. We will, we will now take this time to fill out our evaluation forms. We will be sending those ngayon na po sa ating chat box. So please do uh, fill out. And again, we are constantly reminding everyone to please double check po lo, lahat ng in inputs that na inipong nilalagay sa ating mga forms, especially the spelling of your names and emails. Uh, I think ang ating evaluation forms are in the chat box right now. I think we're sending those. Yeah. All right. Dalawang evaluation form po ang ating uh, ilalabas today. So please make sure uh, both forms are uh, are properly filled out. Wait lang po tayo. Sandali. It will be sent sa ating pong chat box. And now... Uh, while we uh, while we wait no sa uh, atin pong yeah, there you go andiyan na po sa ating chat box ang evaluation forms dalawa po yan please make sure both forms are uh, properly uh, fill out and uh Josh sorry mm -hmm. meron lang tanong dito pag nakapasa raw ba sa exam pwede raw pwede na raw ba sila magturo ng sports law <laughs> or dapat lawyer or graduate uh for me, like teaching, it is inclusive. It will depend on the institution kung saan kayo uh, pwede magturo. You know? uh, if it's a school, then I don't know, there could be certain requirements for the schools. No? So, uh, so, ang pagtuturo ay hindi lang para sa abogado. No? <laughs> so, again, that's the purpose for sports law for all. Music